Hey everybody, how are you guys doing? This is Jesus Ramirez from the Photoshop Training Channel and here I am doing my third, I think it is, my third live stream here on YouTube. And as we did last time, I'm going to show you a Photoshop trick and I'm just going to give you some updates as to what is going on with me and the Photoshop Training Channel. So I'm going to wait just a few minutes here so people start joining the chat so that I could answer any questions before I actually get started with the trick. So while we're waiting for people, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly show you one thing on my YouTube channel. So if you go to my YouTube channel, there is a section called playlists. If you click on that, you'll see this Photoshop content aware um, all tools explain playlist. So check that out. I have six videos on the six different tools that use content aware. So I did, those are like my last six tutorials. They're all on content aware and they're all in order here on this list. So I would recommend checking them out if you're interested in content aware and, um, and the tools that are in the tools that use content aware. So I see that some people are starting to join. So thank you so much for watching. Hi there. And um, the other thing I want to mention is if you don't follow me on Behance already, please follow me on Behance. This is where I post the projects that I'm working on. So these are some of the projects that I've worked on recently. You can see it here. It's behance.net slash JR from PTC. JR is capital from lowercase and PTC is capital letters, uppercase. So um, uh, Tracy said I'll be watching them later. Uh, thanks, Tracy. Hey, hey there. Um, what I haven't done before in the past is I haven't really shown people the, the chat window and I realized that the recording doesn't show it. So I guess I'll drag that over here so that people could see some of the um, comments that are coming in. Oh, hi from Brazil. Hey, how's it going? Um, I'm in San Francisco, California. And actually I just came back from Togo, Africa two days ago. I, I landed on Wednesday afternoon and actually two hours after that I gave a a few hours after that I think it was um, maybe four hours after I landed I gave a presentation for Adobe for Adobe Latin America it was a presentation in Spanish you can watch a recording on the Adobe Latin America uh, page so let me actually show it to you um, Adobe Latin America I wasn't planning on showing you this, but for those of you that are interested, if you go to the Ado official Adobe Latin America page and you scroll down a little bit, let me see right here. That's a presentation I did for them on the 30th of August on compositing. It's in Spanish, unfortunately. So if you don't speak Spanish, then you can watch some of my YouTube videos on compositing. But if you speak Spanish, then you can check out that video I did for Adobe. Also, I mentioned this last time, but I was at um, Adobe Make It in Sydney, Australia. So if you go to the Adobe Make It website, and I guess I can do that now to show you. I think it's uh, make it, yeah, make it apac.adobe.com. You will see the presentation I did for them, that's in English, um, in Sydney, Australia a few weeks ago. So I, I've been traveling a lot. I was in Sydney, Australia for two weeks. And then I came home for a week, and then I went to Africa for another week, and now I'm back. So. I've been traveling a lot lately. But anyway, so if you click on Make It 2017, you'll see all the videos, not just my videos, but everybody's videos. So if you're interested, um, you can watch all the videos from the conference. And I'm somewhere in here. I think I'm under Creative Imaging. So, yep, Creative Imaging, and here I am. So that's my, my session if you're interested in watching it. And I'm going to see... Oops, I accidentally started playing that video, but that's what it looks like. Um, unfortunately, it's not zoomed in into the interface. It's this um, video of me and then the two screens. So you'll get a good idea of what's going on. But anyway, so let me see. And this is a chat. Um, can we watch this live stream later? Just Instagram live? I, I No, I don't think so. I think this is just on YouTube. Um, good day. Hey, everybody. Yeah. Anyway, so now that I see that a lot of people have joined the stream, I think I'm going to get started with the tips. So I'm going to move the chat window to the side and we're going to be talking about curves in this quick little photoshop tip and we're going to talk about color correcting and we're going to talk about um, matching color with curves so we all know what the curves adjustment layer is is this adjustment layer here and let me bring this down so that we could actually see the curves adjustment and 
um, what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a manual color correction and then I'm going to show you how Photoshop does it automatically. And then I'm going to show you how to use that same technique to color match an image. So um, let's get started. So I have my curves adjustment layer here. And if I want to color correct this image, I could go into each individual channel and find the lightest and darkest color. You can see the histogram here. This is where the information is. Notice that in the red, the lightest color doesn't really start till like right about there. You see the information spike right there. So I can drag the white point and drag it to the left. So then that means I'm finding the brightest point. I don't have to do that in the dark point because there is information in the darkest areas. I can go into the next channel, the green channel, and I can do the same thing, find the brightest point, find the darkest point, and then I can go into the blue channel and do the same. Look for the brightest points. And notice that the image now looks much, much better. I can click on this eyedropper here, which is the uh, midtones and just select an area that should be a neutral gray. So this side of the truck here, that, that should be a neutral gray. It's a white truck. So if I click on it, it color corrects the image and that's a much, much better looking image. So that was pretty quick, right? Well, Photoshop can actually do all this for you automatically. So let me throw away this layer and we're going to create a new curves adjustment layer. And the way that Photoshop can do it for you automatically is through the auto options. So you guys see this auto button here. If you hold Alt or Option on the Mac and click, it brings up the auto color correction options. You can also get to it by clicking on this flyout menu. And Adobe likes to hide a lot of good stuff on these little flyout menus. So click on them and go through them and see what you can find. But here it is, auto options. So those are the two ways in which you can get into this menu. And you have different algorithms of how to apply the, um, op the auto options. And look at the third one here, find dark and light colors that is not default but if you click on it notice that it does virtually what we just did a second ago and we can also select snap neutral midtones and that's sort of like clicking on that um midpoint gray eyedropper and then clicking on the on the truck so that's something very similar so you can press ok and that automatically color corrects your image and you can actually use that same technique to match the color of um, two layers. So we have this plane and this um, sunset. If I wanted to match the foreground to match the background in terms of color, I can create a curves adjustment layer, hold Alt option on the Mac and click on the auto button. And I can do the same thing, find dark and light colors. But in this case, I can change the colors. I can change my shadows to be the darkest color of the background. So it will be, one of the reds there. Notice that when I click, it turned white. The reason it did that is if you notice, I don't have the actual curves adjustment layer select that I have the mask selected, the layer mask. So that's why you see that white outline, that focus is on the layer mask. You want it to be on the curves adjustment layer. And if I click on it, now you see the focus there. So I can now hold Alt, Option on the Mac, going to find dark and light colors, click on shadows and, and then select the darkest color for my background. So it will be that color there. Notice now that we have a different problem. We're affecting the entire image. I only want to affect the plane. So what I need to do is make a clipping mask so that I only affect the layer directly below it. So I can click on the clipping mask icon, which is this one here, or use the keyboard shortcut, control alt G, command option G on the Mac and now, once again, hold Alt, click on Auto Options, find dark and light colors, and I can select my shadows, select the darkest color, select my highlights, and find the brightest color, which would be that yellow there. And if the image doesn't look right, you can always come in and adjust the colors accordingly and press OK when you're done. Photoshop is going to ask you if you want to save those colors to make them default. You probably do not, so click on No. And then you can work with the RGB curve to adjust the contrast of the image. So that is the same thing. That is the same technique to um, color correct an image and to apply a color match using the auto options. So let me know what you guys thought about the auto options and if you have any questions regarding that. Meanwhile, I'm gonna look through some of the comments. So I'm gonna bring this back and see if there's anything new that I've missed. Um, tutorials on 3D. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll do more. And I actually did a live session on 3D, I think about a month ago, right before my trip to Australia. So if you haven't seen that, you can check that out. 
and uh, hello from the Netherlands. Hi, Jan. Um, and somebody from India, hello. And another person from India, hi. So yeah, so if you guys have any questions, please let me know. If not, then I can finish this live recording. Um, I'm gonna wait and see if a few more questions come up. Uh, Alex from Buffalo, New York says he did not know about this, super helpful. Yeah, thank you, Alex, glad um, I was able to teach you something new and something that's gonna be helpful. Gary says, thanks for that, quick and simple, cheers. Hello from California. I'm in California too. I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area. Somebody from Belgium. Will this technique work for Milky Way light domes? Um, I mean, it, you know, like with every technique, it all depends on the image. So I guess the short answer is it depends. Do I know? Amarillo High School. I, I don't know. I don't know what that is. And somebody from Hungary. Hey, well, well, uh, this stream will be on YouTube tomorrow. It'll be on YouTube um, right after I finish it, I think. As soon as I hit stop, I think it puts it up on YouTube so you can watch it. Would you do the same process taking the colors of the plane? Meaning if I wanted to match the, the background? Um, if, if that is the question, matching the, the background to the foreground, then in this case it wouldn't necessarily work because the plane is not necessarily giving out the atmospheric perspective but i guess i mean theoretically it, it, it will match the color so I, I guess so hey from barcelona um do you have this same tutorial already on your youtube channel i have so i have both in separate and separate videos i think i don't think i have them all in a single video Uh, will that menu still be in CS6? Yes, it will be. Yeah, so so Jose Silva, I, I mean to match the colors of the plane in the background. Yeah, I mean you could try it, and I, I just don't I just don't know if the sky will look realistic. I guess that's the answer that I'm I'm trying to give. Do you have any tutorials for a crease that runs through a face of an old photo? Meaning creating the crease or removing it but i guess the answer to both is no i don't but if it's removing it you could use one of those content aware um videos that i recorded on the spot healing brush tool and that would work and you can see that right oh that's not where it is it's right where did it go it's right here content aware and the one that i'm talking about would be the spot healing brush tool this one here number five and where did the questions go to remove it yeah so to remove it is it will be the one that i just pointed out on on this image uh, so jay is jay is saying hi would you adjust your opacity on this image or leave it like that and if you're talking about the plane, um, to be honest, I probably would work more on the contrast because I'm not very happy with it. And I probably wouldn't adjust the opacity. I probably would come in and adjust the colors instead. So I would come in and maybe adjust the, the individual channels to get it to look the, uh, the way that I want. Because if I start adjusting the opacity, I think I will bring in too much blue. And it wouldn't look as good as I would, as it could look just by adjusting the curves. If you send a cool <laughs> picture, can you Photoshop it? Um, unfortunately, no, because I get that question asked at least twice a day. And if I started Photoshopping every single picture I receive, that's all I would do. All right, um, it looks like no more questions are coming in. So I will stop the recording and I guess there's one more question. This might be a very basic question, but how do you whiten backgrounds, please? Well, you would remove the background. I, I wouldn't necessarily whiten it. So assuming that this plane was part of the same image, meaning you know it wasn't already composited, I would select the plane 
make a selection out of the plane, make a mask around the plane, and then the background, you can put whatever background you want, including a white background. So I think that's a question you were asking. How can you show content aware horizon and vertical correction? Thanks from the Netherlands. Um, are you referring to crop content aware, uh, Ron? If so, there's a video on that playlist that I mentioned earlier. Um, Facundo, regarding your collaboration, um, yeah, well, you hit, hit me up and um, maybe. I mean, I'm not I'm not opposed on doing it, opposed on doing any collaborations. All right, Montreal. Haven't been there. I want to go. All right, guys. Well, um, thanks so much for sticking with me for I don't know how long has it been. Fifteen minutes, sixteen minutes. Um, I'm going to keep doing these quick tip videos and answer your questions at least once a week. Um, if I come up with a, a better format, then I'll be mentioning what that format is um, through my newsletter. So if you haven't subscribed to my newsletter, go into my website, photoshoptrainingchannel.com, or you can get there by going to ptcvids.com. And just putting your email there, and I send you email notifications every time a new video comes up. Also, if you're a Spanish speaker, you can go to videosptc.com, which is my Spanish website, and I have um, video tutorials in Spanish. So check either of those out. All right. Tracy from Wales. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching. I'll be uh, talking to you soon. I'll have more regular recorded video tutorials coming for you next week. So I'll be talking to you through my tutorials next time. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.